All right, check it out. We got our first sponsor. This is my Range Rover. I've wasted five years waiting for the perfect time to start a restoration. Well, I'm going for it, and you're going to see every step of the process in detail. I'm not a mechanic or a panel beater. I'm just a guy who loves to drive, and I have to save the car that's been more like a partner in crime than just four wheels. And while I'm at it, there's a little something else in the picture. Okay, there's two more, and yes, I have an addiction, but what the hell, if I don't kill myself, it could just work out great, and the road awaits. All right, we're back, and in what a way. Ballet Pro got in touch, and they have sponsored me, so we've got our first sponsor, and I gotta say, a massive thank you to Valet Pro. And I've been dealing with this guy called Greg, a real car guy, and he said, well, you know, what's important to you? And I said, well, what's really been fantastic, what I'm really loving is the people getting in touch saying, you've lit a fire, I'm working on my car now, and I, I had been wasting time, I've been waiting. So can we pat those guys in the back somehow? So he sent me the Valet Pro care pack, and there's lots of really cool stuff in this thing. And he said, look, let's send somebody one of these every episode. So that's what we're gonna do. So get in touch, keep that stuff coming. I'm gonna give the first one, you're gonna think this is just a fix, but I'm gonna give the first one to my buddy Jeff, who I mentioned in the last episode. But there's a really good reason. He got in touch, he knows nothing about this, by the way. He got in touch after the last episode and he said, look what I'm doing. He was so stoked and he sent me some photographs. He has this outhouse that it's big enough for a car and he wants to get a classic but the roof was leaking and there isn't a door in it that will take a car. So look at this. He has peeled the roof off his outhouse and he's re-roofing it himself. He's not just throwing money at it and he's gonna tear down the side wall when he's done with that and put in a door so he can get a car in. And then he's gonna go looking for a car. And this is everything we're about here. This is, this is what this whole thing's about. If there's something in the way, just plow through it, focus and keep going. And that's all I want to hear. You don't have to come and tell me you pull the roof off your garage. Just that you've gotten going. And we'll send one, I'll, I'll pick one each week and we'll send it out to you. So we've got a huge episode. It's very packed full of stuff. I'm going to introduce you to the problem child here. It's a real, yeah, this is a, a sore point and it's going to be tough, but we'll get there. First though, Range Rover. This is an exciting time in the Range Rover build. So I have the rear quarter panel on here to make sure everything fits right and everything was fine. So off that came and I got into making the lip. So here's the top where it meets the C pillar and I tacked this in, it went in real easy. And this is looking really nice. I was getting very, I won't say confident, I was, I was very happy with this. If you look at the bottom of the C pillar here, I'm not anyone to give welding advice, but what I found works for me is a small gap. So when you see this is uneven, I actually consider the bit that's touching more problematic than the, than the gap you see. Because I found that when the pieces of metal were too close together and they heated up, they butted up against each other and had nowhere to go, so they started pushing outwards. So I started to actively put small gaps in between my panels before I welded them. So there's the bottom of the C pillar. This panel, I took a piece of the plating material that had been used in the front footwell, which was really thin, and I handmade a section of this, and then I took it home to the vise, and I made it in the proper steel. So off all that came, and it was time to weld it all in. And there wasn't really any movement, nothing that caused me any distress anyway. You know, none of the panels moved out too much. If you watch very closely here, you'll see it move. Now something I've learned to do is to make my panels a bit too big wherever possible. So you see there's a bit that needs to be trimmed off here and it's better to have something you have to cut off than not having enough and having to start again. This seam is a good example of the welding. It doesn't look pretty, but once you see behind the scenes, I've ground this back. It's very clean, it's very solid. Okay, so in goes the outer arch panel. I, you know, it's just a, a plug weld job again, very easily done. And the last thing was the bottom of the C-pillar. I'm not really crazy happy with this. It's a bit patchy. I left too much of a gap towards the bottom of the panel in one section. I think I'm gonna revisit this. I certainly don't wanna just whack a load of seam sealer in it and kind of smooth it out. I want it to be as solid as it can be underneath the paint. 
At this point, I left, I went to Greece and I did some totting up. I went to the log that I've been keeping and I realized I've been working on the car for 90 hours over 19 separate days. I'd used obviously the prefabricated sills, but I'd made 14 handmade repair panels. I'd used a tin of etch primer and I'd used a couple of pairs of gloves and two spools of welding wire. That's about a kilo and a half of welding wire. So the spend is less than 100 quid in terms of consumables. Obviously the panels that I bought were more but that's not bad. I mean, to get along, to just be making the stuff you can make, 100 quid against three weeks worth of work is really good going, I think. So it just shows what you can achieve. Okay, we'll leave it there. Next time I'll get into the front foot well on the near side and we'll get that sorted. And then it's on to the offside, which is gonna be a lot of fun. All right, more range over next time. Into the Esprit, it's gonna be a short one because we've got lots to get through. I started stripping the passenger side this time and here it is. All right, onward with the strip of the Esprit. And the inner part of the glove box holds the two little fuse boxes. And so the side of the glove box wall was able to just do whatever it wanted. And it's folded in here, like you see, we'll have to deal with that. So I had it came and then I went for the carpets and little hiccup here. The seatbelt receive, which is broken, was completely seized in. So I came the angle grinder because I didn't know whether this was directly onto the chassis or onto a plate and I wasn't going to risk threading something. Now, when you've set yourself on fire a couple of times with a grinder, you learn how not to set things on fire, keep an eye on wherever the sparks are going. So you'll see a lot of smoke here, but don't worry. And I will strain to point out that there are numerous fire extinguishers to hand. So that came out and then the carpets followed. And I found this piece of glass in the bulkhead sound deadening how this got down here obviously something got broken and who knows whether it was the windscreen or the kind of bulkhead screen if you are an esprit guy and you've done a restoration maybe this is lotus build quality but does this sealant here look like it's factory or has somebody just been sloppy afterwards i'd love to know and i found some original carpet on the bulkhead too and this is great because i have a reference line now for the new carpet where it should go up to So I tackled the handbrake next and there was no problem here. It came out very, very easily. And I didn't retract the cables fully here because that's for when I get into the engine bay. So the last little bits of sound deadening came out and then I went for the heater and there wasn't really much fluid in it, which kind of worries me, but then it has been 23, 24 years since the car was run and the heater came out no problem. And here it is. It looks good. The matrix looks good, but hey, you know, what does the outside have to deal with only air? Looking down the bores, it still looks good too, but who knows, we'll probably pressure test it and then either reuse it or replace it. So that's about it for the Esprit this time. I know I said I'd strip the pedal box, but I want to move on to the back and spice things up and we'll come back to it. Okay, before I reintroduce the bus, I'm gonna tell you the tale, a classic tale, of a guy I met in Athens on the way down here at the start of this trip, and he, like so many of us, has fallen foul of a siren. So this one is for the young bucks. I was car shopping for my folks in Athens and I found myself in this well-kept garage that's specialized in smart cars, and it's run by a guy with a very rare name, Xenophon. Here he is with his wife Marys, and that's Moosey. Xenophone's name is as classic as his taste in cars. He would dearly love an early 50s step side pickup like this one. This belongs to Bill McEwen of Radnor, Pennsylvania. Bill, uh, this thing's just cool. I'm sure plenty of people would agree it's got that perfect patina. There's Bill. But Xenophone doesn't have his truck and he had convinced himself of all the usual things. They're too expensive and I want to try and find one that's complete but for nothing obviously. And <laughs> all that stuff. And so he's commuting on this very gorgeous bike, but it's a bike nonetheless, and he doesn't have his classic pickup. And just before I was about to leave, the penny dropped when Mary said, hey, what about taking a shot of my car? And she pointed down the street. So here she is. I'm gonna tell everybody that this is the reason that Xenophone doesn't have his, his, his pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> Clever girl. you find a story as much to say Welcome to the Peloponnesus, Greece's biggest and best island. This is where my family have a little place and it's in a secluded village, coastal village, down the east coast. Peloponnesus, of course, as a half Greek male, I'm obliged to tell you that the word derives from the ancient Greek and it of course means land of epic roads. 
I'm so lucky to be able to say even this road that winds its way down to the village, this is an incredible piece of road. It's very Big Sur-esque in the sense that it runs all the way down the east coast of southern Greece and it winds and winds and it's, you know, there's huge drops down to the water and it's just very, very serene and picturesque. Five kilometres back up this road to the next village is where I found my van and in 2008 when I settled here, there were nine others. I was settling down here to start a business, refitting and exporting these vans for water sports enthusiasts all over Europe. When I got it back, the first thing I needed to do was kit out the garage. So I built these garage doors and I built a workbench because a standard one wouldn't fit. So a neighbor was replacing their windows and I used the frames to build this kind of fold up idea of a bench here. Now I'm going to tell you something that I'm probably going to cop some flack over. But when I was getting my van, I found two split screen vans that I potentially could have had. The first was actually quite far away. It was down in Sparta where I was visiting a car pal and he hadn't noticed it. He drove past it every day going to work and he was kicking himself. It had been hemmed in by a building that was built almost around it. And the only way we could have gotten it out was by crane, which we were going to do. But when we emptied the van, we realized it had been rusting from the inside out. And the only way I could describe it to you is it was thin. I mean, it had been made thin by the rust and we just didn't think it would survive being stropped and craned out of there. So we left it and it's gone. The land was developed and who knows what happened. The second one was much closer by, only about 10 minutes away. And to say that I was back and forth to this thing is an understatement. I went to see it first and I concluded it was too far gone. It was even worse than, than the other one. And then I got home and I thought, oh, but it's a split screen, surely you can save it. And I went back. And when I got back, I realized, no, it's, it's definitely too far gone. And this went on, I mean, five or six times until I decided, no, it really the practical thing to do. I can't strip this even for parts because I don't have the space. I had to leave it, so that's gone too. Anyway, let's get back to my van. I got these measurements from a Frenchman that I found on YouTube, who has a great video of just him flipping over his van on one of these cradles. And he sent me the measurements. I haven't been able to contact him since. But what I realized was I had to modify, I had to shorten everything because I didn't have the height in my garage to make a cradle of the same measurements. So that's what I did. And I did a lot of it by eye, I have to say. I kind of retro engineered it by making up plates that bolt onto the chassis and then figuring out my lengths working off that outwards. And that's what I would suggest you do too because it's such a basic design Whatever you do, it's gonna work. So long as your welds are strong and you haven't kind of made angles that are too crazy, it will work. I take no responsibility though for whatever you do with this thing and how you use it, that's up to you. But just so you are aware, these measurements I devised myself. The center of gravity of them is probably, you know, is certainly altered from the measurements that Philippe gave me. And I haven't been able to contact him again to get these original measurements. So maybe you'll have better luck. What I will say is I, feel so much peace of mind from having had these welded up. I built it and tacked it up, but I had it welded by a professional and I feel very, very secure in that knowledge. And they have, I mean, you're gonna see in a little bit, I, I nearly killed myself with this thing. And I'm just glad that the wells were strong because you need to know when you're underneath a car that whatever's holding it up is solid. So anyway, as uncomfortable as it makes me, I think it's time that we did talk about <laughs> My little lapse of judgment, let's just call it that. I'm gonna show you this footage raw. You've seen a glimpse of it in the intro of each episode, but I did that guy thing of, you know, I can do this by myself, and I was a little bit excited and probably a bit giddy, and so I went about trying to tip the van over by myself. Now, I was using a trolley jack with some beams of wood and some chocks, and luckily I was not stupid enough not to kind of have some sort of safety measures in place which were in the form of, um, like I say, big beams of wood kind of down the length of the van propped against it so if it did go they would theoretically hold it. I started to jack this thing up and down it came and I'm going to let you hear the raw footage here because you'll hear the yelp that comes out of me and you'll, you'll kind of hear the weight of the van too in the noise it makes. So there you go, here it is from a different angle.
I freeze here and I freeze because this thing was teetering and I wasn't sure was it gonna come further if I move is it gonna induce another slide so I'm spotting my exit here <laughs> very 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 carefully and then I get out my heart was pumping this would have been at best a very very severe injury but I don't think I would have survived if this had come over there wasn't the crawl space underneath it and certainly not in the position I was in and I wouldn't have died straight away, I don't think. I would have had enough time to realise I was on my way out and there was nothing I could do about it. If I had have been alive, it would have been four or five hours before someone missed me. So this was just going to be a horrific thing. You do not need this. It's not worth it. No amount of kind of satisfaction you get from doing stuff by yourself is worth the risk I took here. Just don't do it. And then I went and did what I should have done in the first place, which was go and ask for some help, which I got. And two, two guys can easily tip one of these things over, which we did. So that's my don't try this at home kids bit. Don't try that at home without some help. You know, uh, look, the hairs stand up on the back of my neck every time I watch this bit of footage because I, I actually think about uh, my family and my friends and stuff and... <laughs> You know, even them having to explain what an absolute idiot I was to try and do this by myself. Oh yeah, he died. Yeah, he died because he was trying to flip a van over by himself. <laughs> yeah, he thought he was Superman. That'd be just embarrassing. Not that it matters when you're dead. All right, we're done for episode five. I have got some great leads for stories for future episodes. Hopefully something pans out before episode six so we can get it out to you then. There will be one more Greek episode before I get back to Ireland. Um, and I'd love to do a road trip episode. And I've seen a jag. I've seen this jag. It is old and it's cool. I don't even know if it's complete. I don't know if it's savable. And I certainly don't know whether the guy would sell it to me for a price that's reasonable because... Um, the car market in Greece is nuts. It's just nuts. But the funds aren't there anyway, so we're going to have to see about that. And speaking of funds, I have new patrons. William McEwen, whose truck we saw. Um, Bill, you're obviously a very generous guy. Thanks a million. Kev Sheridan, Maxie McDonald, David Bailey and Kim Monday. Gentlemen, thank you so much. This is... I, I'm going to... I'd love to do something like a road trip episode with, with this stuff, um, you know, if it builds up a bit more. Um, and we'll just wait until then, see what happens. So the other thing about Patreon is I'm trying to be better about posting behind the scenes updates to the Patreon feed. It's kind of like a, a you know, social media thing and you'll see things going on there. Um, so check that out. And if you want to contribute, please do. I will try and put that towards stuff that isn't just keeping me alive. It's stuff that you can enjoy as well. So um, things are looking up. Ballet Pro, thank you so much. Until the next episode, please like, please subscribe and share this. Sh send it to somebody who you know who needs a good shove to get their car going. Um, and I will see you the next time. Keep those spanners cranking and good luck. <laughs>